What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. Well, it looks like it's gonna be a pretty busy day today. Of course, Nintendo did announce that direct after Newswave, as I was kind of alluding to, go figure there. But that has now sent hype levels through the roof as it is a full 40 minute general direct. We'll go over that here today. Also, we are gonna be talking about Sony as yesterday, they announced their own event later on today, that being a full state of play with 10 games they're gonna unveil. So a lot of stuff happening today. And then also we're gonna be talking about a shakeup over at Xbox and 343 as the founder of the studio is now retiring, making many people wonder, What's next for Halo Infinite? Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're gonna start today with Splatoon 3, specifically sales that Nintendo decided to share with us after just three days. And when you see the number, you understand why. This is over on Nintendo's website with the headline, domestic sales of Splatoon 3 for Nintendo Switch. Get this, surpassed 3.45, million units in its first three days. I wanna point this out, domestic sales of Splatoon 3, that means 3.45 million copies in three days in just Japan. So we'll find out, I'm sure, more information from Nintendo the next time they share overall numbers for games with investors, but that is ridiculous for a title. In fact, that is the biggest opening a game has ever seen in Japan. So anyone who is wondering how big is Splatoon for Nintendo, well, it's their biggest opening in Japan, so that goes to show you where that sits now with all of their other franchises. But Splatoon is particularly impressive because it's not that old of an intellectual property. Remember, Nintendo created it brand new during the Wii U era when, I mean, Nintendo wasn't exactly flying high then, but they stuck with it and Splatoon 2 did well, and now here they are with Splatoon 3 turning in, I'm gonna say, Call of Duty-like numbers. So impressive stuff there for Splatoon 3. I think this one's gonna do very well overall when, it, when it's all said and done. Also, we have a bit of an update when it comes to Assassin's Creed Mirage and the store listing that had an adult-only rating next to it. We can see this over on Twitter from the Assassin's Creed account saying, following the announcement of Assassin's Creed Mirage, some store pages displayed the game for pre-orders with an adults-only ESRB rating. While the game is still pending rating, we want to reassure players that no real gambling or loot boxes are present in the game. So that doesn't necessarily rule out microtransactions as I think most of us assume by now that Ubisoft will work some sort of extra currency that you can buy into all these titles. And I think that's one of the big reasons they're moving to this infinity platform so that your bought currency can go between all these different games and episodes and stuff. But it's not shocking to hear the adults only rating it was an error. I don't think Assassin's Creed Mirage was going to launch with that next to it. It just seemed to be a mix up. And when it does come out of the ratings board, I would assume it'll just get the standard mature rating that they've seen for the entire franchise at this point. Oh, and sticking with Ubisoft, we have heard from them that they are evaluating the idea of moving to a $70 price tag for their larger AAA games. Well, that was last year when they said that, and it seems like their tune has changed a bit recently. We can see this post up over on Twitter from Steven Totillo over at Axios. Says Ubisoft is leaving $60 behind for its big releases. Skull and Bones, new gen is $70. That, that was known, we've seen that on the store page. We all had a laugh about that and everything. But they say Ubisoft CEO East Guillermo told me, some of the games will, will come at the same price as the competition. The big AAA games will come at $70. And, to me, this isn't shocking, and I think it's expected at this point that as we go along here and the $70 price tag becomes more and more accepted, you'll see large publishers continue to move to that because, well, that's what the competition's doing, so they have to kind of match that. I think eventually we'll see Nintendo move up to $70 because now they're in a position where they're thinking, wait, is The Legend of Zelda worth less than Skull and Bones? Probably not. No, I, I assume Zelda is worth a bit more than skull and bones. Of course, that's not out yet, but just the eye test on that one. But there we have it. Another big publisher, yes, moving to that $70 price tag. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with Nintendo and their big event happening here in a couple of hours, that being their fall Nintendo Direct. It was something that we have been talking about for weeks now with the predictions, of course, for this week. And it turns out it is indeed today, that being Tuesday, we can see this post up by Nintendo over on their Twitter account. Tune in at 7 a.m. Pacific tomorrow, September 13th, for a Nintendo Direct live stream featuring roughly 
40 minutes of information mostly focused on Nintendo Switch games launching this winter. Again, want to point out, mostly focused, that being games that will be coming out here pretty I mean, winter is that time period where they can go into 2023 somewhat up to like, what, March or so, but I think they could potentially show games that are even further than that, and that's why they're using mostly. So, looking, of course, at the lineup now, actually, the next couple of months are pretty stacked for Nintendo. I still believe they're going to try to fit another one or two titles in uh, for the holiday season, which means they might launch something in that first week of December. Probably will be Advance Wars, just kind of push that out uh, uh, as they kind of get into 2023, but still... It does seem like things like Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, that being a bundled skew at $60, most likely is coming out this year as they're looking to have a Zelda game every year, as they've said previously. And then that would open up kind of the runway to uh, Breath of the Wild 2, that launching sometime in the spring, which could be even May or June there. And then on top of that, the other big one that's been rumored is Metroid Prime Remaster. And that kind of leads me into one of my, I, I guess, Bold predictions or big predictions, I think Metroid Prime 4 will be at this direct. And in fact, I think it'll be the thing they close out with. They show Metroid Prime Remaster, and that apparently coming in November. So they'll, we'll see where they try to place that around things like Pokemon. But then they lead up to Metroid Prime 4's trailer and release year, which I think is 2023. I think that's one of their holiday games for next year. So we'll see with that one even just a basic cg trailer to give fans an idea as to the direction of metroid prime 4. retro studios has been working on this game for years now if you remember back uh what was that 20 oh gosh it was 2019 that we really got word that this thing was being rebooted but it was like early early 2019 so it seems like now would be a good time to get things set up for that title going into 2023. outside of that we have the nintendo switch online and there have been a, a lot of speculations I'll say around the idea of Game Boy being revealed here mostly because it's apparently been ready for a year or two now we even saw the emula emulators just leak online I think they would talk about regular Game Boy and then maybe Game Boy Advance would be safe for that expansion pack tier I think you'll also see some third-party stuff thrown in there and we'll probably see some ports that we expect and then others that we just did not ever think would happen like we talk about Deadly Premonition or Pac-Man World. Those were ones that, well, definitely out of left field, but games we've been calling for for a little while now, like Final Fantasy, Pixel Remasters, all those uh, different games on one cartridge, I think would be really cool to see. And then let's go ahead and just grab F-Zero GX and move it up to the Switch with online play. That's been rumored quite a bit recently, and I think at this point, F-Zero fans should finally get that win. But I think it's going to be a lot of fun. 40 minutes, general direct, not a mini, not a partner showcase, nothing like that. So I think we're going to see some pretty exciting stuff here happen in a couple of hours. Oh, and I wanted to point this out because this was mentioned briefly by Jeff Grubb, Mike Minotti, and people over at Giant Bomb that... The Direct could have been delayed or moved around uh, because of the Queen's passing. Well, we can see this posted up over on Twitter from Nintendo UK. As a mark of respect during this period of national mourning, we will not live stream tomorrow's Nintendo Direct. It will be published as a video on demand on our YouTube channel tomorrow. So there you have it. There were indeed internal discussions and talks about having to move around the Direct, and it seems that Nintendo just overall as a global company decided they were are indeed going to go ahead with the live stream but in this case for nintendo uk they won't be live streaming and just kind of publishing it on their youtube channel so yeah i guess jeff grubb really was onto something there next up let's talk about the other big event that'll be taking place later on tonight and that is a state of play you can see this posted up by playstation on twitter state of play returns tomorrow september 13th watch live to see new reveals and updates for ps5 ps4 and PlayStation VR 2, that will be happening 3 p.m. Pacific or 6 p.m. Eastern Time. If we go over to PlayStation Blog, they give us a bit more insight as to what we can expect. They say, for tomorrow's show, we'll have some great updates from our amazing Japanese partners, along with a few other surprises from developers all around the world. Expect about 20 minutes of reveals, new updates, and fresh gameplay footage for 10 games coming to PS5, PS4, and PSVR 2. It is interesting that PlayStation 4 is being thrown in there. Yeah, I guess PS4 is going to be running 
for 10 years as we expect to see it now in 2023 if they're going to be revealing more and more titles for it going into next year. But this, I mean, it's exciting stuff. In one day, we're going to have a Nintendo Direct and a State of Play. In fact, we even see some interaction over on Twitter from PlayStation saying big day coming up here, big day tomorrow to Nintendo of America. So for Sony, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that could happen here. We know about all these live service games. We know most of their first party studios are working on new games coming up here soon. I don't think Spider-Man 2 will be here. I... I almost feel like that's at, it's already been announced. At this point, I would want to sit down and see more about this game completely. The fact that they're going to do 10 games in 20 minutes as tells me they're going to go through some of these announcements a bit faster. I mean, if you just divide it up, that's two minutes per title. So I don't think any one title is going to get like half the presentation at 10 minutes. And they're going to be jumping around between the PSVR 2 and PS5. I'd like to see one of these live service games, maybe uh, maybe Gorilla is working on something or Deviations ready to show what their project is. And that those are some of the unknowns, right? Some of these second party studios, some becoming first party with like Haven. And then you throw on top the idea of some pretty hefty rumors going around as they mentioned Japanese partners. Could we see Silent Hill here and Nate can finally get one up over MVG? Could we see that Metal Gear Solid remake that I feel like has been teased for years now? I would absolutely love to see something Metal Gear Solid related, mostly just so that Konami can acknowledge that, yes, we, we understand that series is still popular and uh, we'd like to do something with it, even if it's just them licensing it out to a, a Sony first party studio like a Blue Point or, or something there. Although Blue Point's supposed to be working on a new intellectual property, so hey, Anything's possible at this state of play. I'm trying to figure out where expectations should be for this because it's not like a, like a PlayStation showcase or something. And it's 20 minutes long. So my expectations for the state of play are, I think, lowered a bit compared to where they would be for Nintendo's big general direct. However, I still think we're gonna see some pretty cool stuff at both events and going into Tokyo Game Show, Seems like a pretty packed couple of weeks here. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about a big shakeup at Xbox and 343 Studios. We can head over here to Twitter. This from Bonnie Ross, who is the founder and head of 343. They say, I, while I had hoped to stay with Halo until we released the winter update, I am letting you know I will be leaving 343 and attending to a family medical issue. I am incredibly proud of the work everyone in 343 Industries has done with Halo Infinite, the Master Chief Collection and Halo Television Series, probably could have left the television series out of it, and so much more. It was an honor to serve alongside the team for the last 15 years and to be a part of a universe that I love. Thank you to everyone in the Halo community for your support. Halo's future is bright. I cannot wait for all of you to experience what we have in store and to cheer alongside you as a fan at the Halo World Championship in October. Now with Bonnie Ross's departure, it looks like we're gonna see a bit of a restructuring over at 343. This is according to Windows Central, saying Microsoft also announced the leadership team is undergoing something of a restructure, splitting Bonnie Ross' role into three parts to better serve the franchise's growing footprint, which now includes a TV show and other cross-media projects. Studio veteran and production lead Pierre Hintz will become studio head of 343 Effective immediately, leading the studio's ongoing development of Halo Infinite and the Master Chief Collection, as well as future games. The senior leadership team will expand with new roles, including Brian Kosky, who will become GM of Franchise, and Elizabeth Van Wake, who will oversee business and operations. So this is a big moment for 343 and Halo Infinite. I mean, Bonnie has been there since the start of 343, which, yes, is a studio that was created with the sole purpose of being able to make Halo games after Bungie left. The thing is, obviously, they have not been able to make a good Halo game all the way around. They seem to launch with some issue every single time. The nice thing here, though, I will say is Pierre did manage to work and actually, like, re revive Master Chief Collection completely. I mean, that was in a bad spot when it came out, and I believe he actually did work on it late 2017, 2018, and then throughout, and the game's in a much better place now. So Pierre kind of heading now Halo Infinite's development ongoing procedures, I think should at least do well for Halo Infinite in the long run. I mean, that's where Halo Infinite is now. The game itself 
has been created. Now you have to build on top of that going forward. Unfortunately, I really don't know much about Brian or Elizabeth, but it does appear that this is the shakeup that people have been calling for when it comes to 343. And I saw some people online who were speculating that Bonnie is leaving for something other than what she said here, which are family medical issues. I wouldn't assume anything other than what she's said here because she mentioned she was going to try to stay through the winter update, but she's needed elsewhere. And obviously family is very important. So hopefully everything is able to be sorted out on that end there. But when it comes to Halo Infinite, I am curious to see where we go from here. This is, I think, the shakeup that 343 sort of needed and having, I guess, different leadership and even having Bonnie's job kind of broken up a bit as it does seem like she was trying to deal with a lot all at once when it came to 343 and Halo in general may actually be better for the series now going forward. So we'll see that. And of course, Joseph Staten being there to kind of help, I guess, nurture this game into, I would hope to be a better place years from now. So there we have it. The Bonnie Ross who has been there since the start of 343, retiring and leaving the company. And before we go to the comment of the day, we're gonna take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday. We're asked, is Metroid Prime 4 going to be part of the direct 27% said yes, 73% said no, I like it. The reverse psychology method here, you vote no and it'll be there just to prove you wrong. I, I actually think it will be here, especially if Metroid Prime Remaster is there, which so many people seem just outright 100% confident that it will be there because I, apparently it's releasing in November. I don't know how you talk about Metroid Prime Remaster without mentioning the elephant in the room. And I guess they could do it, what they did with Dread where they were like, oh, we're still working on Prime 4. Don't worry, guys, and here's Dread. I guess they could say the same thing and then be like, oh, here's Metroid Prime Remaster, just kind of get you started on the series. But I think if you show Prime Remaster, it's a great way to then move right into Metroid Prime 4 and reveal that it's coming out next year. At least that's the hope, because if they show Prime Remaster and don't really do much about Prime 4 right then with the presentation, it'll certainly bring up a lot of questions and concerns from the audience, I'm sure. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from John Doe singing my Bayonetta voice on that Nintendo Direct prediction, nice try. I guess if you throw darts at it every day, eventually one will hit because eventually one day a Direct will come out. That's true, I mean, I've been throwing darts though at this week of the 12th for a couple of weeks now, right? I guess they all just happen to land on that week. But maybe it's time to go back to the drawing board, get some more darts and maybe going into next year, we can start taking some more throws at that, I don't know, that maybe that Switch Pro. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. We have a Nintendo Direct and a PlayStation State of Play happening today. Leave me your predictions and hopes for either show down in the comments. And also, what about the big shakeup at 343 with Bonnie Ross actually leaving the studio? What do you think this means for the future of Halo Infinite? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.